How's it going YouTube? Open Poker James here. So today we are doing a session review of some $1 spinning goes that have been sent to us. Uh, their PokerStars username is critio 3 uh, this was during the Tetris promotion, so we'll see how the games are uh, and see what the games are like in 2021. Um, I have played a few of these micro stakes games now that there's this Tetris promotion and it's looking extra soft. But there are a few differences in when it comes to uh, 2x multipliers. The players are definitely playing better. Uh, however, on the 3x and 5x multipliers, they're, they're playing pretty bad. So, yeah. Uh, let's jump in and see what kind of strategy adjustments we could make. Right, so uh, Critio03 does uh, post quite a lot of hand histories over in our Discord channel. Um, so hopefully those strategy advice that they've been getting from that will help in this game. I guess we'll see. Uh, they are playing the $1 spinning goes. We've got a $3 prize pool. So this is a free X multiplier, which is the basically um, the average that you should be getting. If there was no rake, this is the average you should be getting. So yeah, these games um, do have three minute blind levels. The two X's have two minute blind levels. So we do get a little, little bit longer to play than the two X's. It's interesting to note that in this one right now, we've got the Tetris leaderboard promotion going on um, where free X multipliers do seem kind of lame in that regard. Yes, you get your free dollars, uh, but you don't get much in terms of points for the Tetris promotion. I don't know if people will start doing some silly things because of that or not. I guess we'll see. Uh, but yeah, let's just keep going. I notice um, you've got some HUDs going on. And you do have some hands on uh, this player. So much more likely that they're a regular player, much more likely that they're uh, multi-tabling if you have hands on them in such a big player pool as the $1 spinning goes. Um, King Knight suited, fairly easy raise, and then on an ace queen board we've got the nut flush draw uh, but yeah on an ace queen board in general just betting all of your hands is almost never going to be a mistake so i do like that and the sizing that i would use is one third pot so that's what we're doing i like it so far this is good we've got ace five now against the just complete shove okay um i think for the most part these early game shoves are normally low pocket pairs and occasionally hands like ace 10, ace 9, ace jack. That's normally what I see, but mostly I would say twos to fives is the kind of range that you should be expecting there. Um, so just call according to that, I would say. Call according to stuff that plays well against that. So if you have pocket sixes or better, I would snap call those shoves for sure. Pocket fives, I would call, versus the shove. Pocket fours, it's getting a bit dicey, but yeah, you can call that as well. Anything lower, I would fold threes and twos. And then when it comes to high cards, I would want um, ace 10 off plus, I would say. Right, we've got a button limp after they shoved the previous hand. I like that, that you've labeled them probably recreational. I don't think you can call King Jack. Okay, you make the fold good because you've got a player to act behind you. These min bets should be a good indication as well that they're recreational. I think you can mark, make, mark both players as a recreationals because that sizing on such a board texture doesn't look good to me at all. Not at all. There we go, we've got another button limp so we can Make the note as well. Uh, yeah, it looks like maybe because of this Tetris promoter, you might have someone just being a bit aggro, wanting to get different multipliers, which of course is fine. We're okay with them playing super crazy. 
Uh, given that, definitely just want to fold queen four, seeing as how they've been playing. Jack six to fold, good. Poppy jacks, now we want the shove. No, they don't shove. Okay, so jacks, I like the sizing. Yep, the ISO of three big blinds. That's, that's the way to go. Ace, queen, nine board. There is nothing wrong with just betting any two on a board like this. I don't mind that at all. Um, with jacks, you can totally check that back as well. Can't really go wrong. I think you're gonna, just going to get tons of folds. If you do bet and you do get called, most of the time you're looking to get your jacks to showdown and hope that they've got a nine and you've got some value from them. Uh, but there are some crazy runouts where maybe you could turn your hand into a bluff. But they happen so rarely. I don't think we need to talk too much about them. Six five um, probably wouldn't go for a limp against this player. They've been fairly aggressive. I would just leave these very borderline weaker hands out of position against certain opponents out of there. I would just just fold. But you do limp. I think it's obviously never going to be terrible. Uh, you hit the six and then you check. Um, It's okay to do, but I think you just want to protect your hand. There are so many bad cards that can come out, and we really don't expect our opponent to have an ace. Once we've limped, they've been super aggressive, and now they've checked. I just don't expect them to have an ace that often, uh, if ever. So I would just bet straight away trying to protect my hand. There are just... Most turn cards are horrible. This one actually isn't, but yeah. Most of them are, so I would have bet to protect. And we get called. Um, I don't mind bet, I don't mind check. With the flush coming in and uh, some straights coming in, You can kind of make a block better size, which is almost what you've done, which is just one big blind, uh, and then decide whether to call or not. You ha actually have a really, really nice blocker, which is the five of hearts. Um, so you could block bet and then call versus a raise. Or you can check and then versus a bet yeah no I think I think the best play here is to just bet one big blind uh, fold most of the time but considering you have the five of hearts you can call a, a race that you're hoping would be a bluff that's what I would do Let me just take it down um, what do you think they could call with some king highs, maybe some queen highs, maybe they were weak with a pair of fours and folded. But yeah, I would size down a tiny amount, just bet the minimum, just a blocker bet really. And you got to make sure most of your blocker bets are going to be folding. So here you have 6-5. Most 6-5s you want to be folding. Most 6-Xs, if you do bet, you want to fold to a raise. But the 5 of hearts is very heavy blocker to the kind of hands that you... Yeah, that's the kind of hand you want to be blocking the most of, is the 5. So Especially 5 of hearts. So I think it's okay to make a call with that. Haven't seen too much of Feng yet. They haven't been particularly aggressive, but it's been a small sample. A6, okay. This could get interesting. Yeah, 
Let's see how it fold. Um, yeah, against the limp, you can shove. I would say shoving is an option or checking to see a flop. Both options. Both are, are, are fair options. I wouldn't be raising non all in with a hand like that, personally. So, yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, Ace 10 suited at this stack size, you could make a min raise or 2.2x raise um, and play it post flop. Really, it depends on what your pre flop plan is. If you've got a set chart on this is how you play and you don't really need to make adjustments based on that, especially when you're out of position, then just ignore what I'm saying here and just keep to those charts, whatever they are. But if you're just looking at it from a very flexible standpoint, you're up against someone who you think, or at least I think, you can beat pretty nicely post-flop. You've got a nice playable hand. They might be a bit on the aggressive side of things as well. So you can raise and allow them to shove over you if they want to. Uh, all those indicators to me would just lean it towards making uh, a non-all-in min raise. 2.2 big blinds or min raise. That's what I would do. Uh, whereas shoving doesn't allow any of those spots where they can make those mistakes. But yeah, um, I would never say to someone, if you're playing $1 spinning goes, uh, you probably, if you've got a bunch of charts, you probably don't want to deviate from those charts that often. Really, when you're playing micro stakes games, the way to build your bankroll and get good is just don't make any big mistakes. So following the charts is generally the best way to make sure you don't make big mistakes. So take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt um, if you are playing micro stakes. However, if you are playing low stakes spin and goes, so generally $5, $10, $25 spin and goes, you do want to start looking for ways to exploit Spe specifically the weaker players that you come up against because that's where all of the chip EV and win rate comes from uh, at the low stakes and the high stakes so yeah but for now if you're playing the micros really the the goal and the plan is should be be a solid player and not make huge mistakes so yeah I would be tempted, personally, like as an exploit. Again, I would be tempted to raise here preflop with king eight. Tempted. Because we don't mind playing against these guys. Post flop. I don't know if it would be, I think it would be a break even place. So I think it's fine to fold. of action in this hand let's see if we get anything to take away from it okay right so 10 9 and 10 5 let's go back and figure out how did the action how did the action go down so we have king 8 we fold 10 9 suited decided to limp uh, which I guess is okay I yeah I mean you can't really go wrong really you could shove, you could min raise, you can limp a hand like that. As long as you're stacking off, I think it's okay. So you flop the top pair and they checked. Okay. I would say generally speaking, no, no, it's a, it's a completely fine hand to check on this board because uh, when you do check and they check behind, lots of turn cards that would normally be quite disastrous for your top pair aren't because they would be hands like Jack coming out or a Queen coming out or a 7 coming out. And all of those bring a straight draw out for you as well. So, yeah, it's not as bad. Um, you face a pot-sized bet. If I was in this player's shoes... I would have 
raised directly on the flop, even against the pot size bet. But I guess it's not terrible. And then calling and then seeing a just kind of brickish turn card and then leading out is actually not bad at all, <laughs> to be honest with you. And then thing shoving 10-5, I think is a bad play. I think this is a fairly easy call from Feng's perspective. You've got half pot size bet. It's just an easy call, I would say. And they get lucky and bink the five. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think Feng played that too well. Uh, if you get anything from that, it's quite likely that they're the kind of player that would want to fast play hands a lot which means that you can be triple barreling these kinds of players you can make small raise sizes to try and figure out where you are in the hand as exploits against those kinds of players who are always just when they have a big hand they just start putting mon piling money in ace queen nice easy raise hand Uh, I don't mind checking or betting. We get called. Um, on the turn, we've really got to decide what are we doing here. We've still got some showdown value of ace high for sure. So I think I would be checking back and then hoping to hit the spade on the river so then we can re-raise. Uh, so then we can, we can put some more chips in the pot. Uh, and then... A, quite often calling a river bet anyway just with ace high that's what i would do betting like reopens up the action and especially against someone who's just shoved that 10 five hand you don't want to be reopening the action because then you probably have to call against the shove which isn't the nicest feeling you're calling because they could have uh club draws um as bluffs so yeah and then against 4x you've got a decent amount of equity so when you add the bluffs in as well i think you would have to but yeah i don't like betting here i really don't like betting not just against this opponent but in general i think this is just simple play to check behind if the spade comes out now you can build the pot up if it doesn't then often you're just calling to see if they've missed a uh, missed a draw let's say the river is a club most clubs you want to be folding uh, maybe not the four of clubs maybe you wouldn't want to fold that one um but yeah any other club okay not the queen of clubs and not the eight of clubs you'd want to be folding all the other ones um but yeah, most rivers probably can call to two thirds or three quarters pot bet or less with your ace queen. And now you've just been put in the, the horrible spot where you have to call now and you're just hoping that they've got two clubs. So yeah, I would have preferred to have checked behind and make things simpler for rivers. So, oof. You are <laughs> you are one one lucky chappy here <laughs> to get it in so good, I have to say. Um Yeah. You do you're you're just hoping that they've got worse flush draws than you at this point. And they do. And they win. <laughs> ouch, 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 ouch. Um yeah, I I think that um these kind of spots are just putting you because you've bet so big on the turn you've committed yourself which means that the um, it's not a hard call to make which is good let's say you bet two big blinds here instead now you've put yourself in a nasty spot where you don't know whether you should call or not so yeah um this bet is never going to be terrible in terms of you could just uh be you could just be fold yeah 
compared to folding, right? It's never going to be terrible compared to folding. But when you start with the small bets, you can put yourself in a lot of trouble. I think overall, no big mistakes were made, which is the important thing. Um, if I'm looking at someone playing micro stakes and I want to see how they're doing, if I want to see if or figure out how they are going, how things are doing, if I see a 20 minute video and I see no huge glaring mistakes, like the sizings are good, uh, the ranges are good, pre-flop, the idea is good, then I think they're going to be doing well. So I think Critio so far that everything seems good. Um, I do like that this player not only is sent in a session review, but also on our Discord channel, we uh, allow hand histories or allow we let people share their hand histories and then go through like strategy advice on how to do with this. Um, this player has been sending a lot of hands in and I think that's a really good sign of someone that's looking to learn and improve. So hats off to that. I think that's really these days, if you want to get good at poker, you need to be actively trying to learn. So if you want to follow anyone's lead, follow their lead. That's how you do it. Uh, I hope and expect to see um, Critio moving up to the twos and then hopefully the fives as soon as possible. Uh, I would like to make a request actually. If Critio, if you ever do get to the fives, which are from what I've seen, there's no reason why you shouldn't. Um, can you send in a, another session review? I'd love to do to see how things go because I'm pretty confident that as long as you're not cashing out all the time and as long as you're not tilting or sports betting or playing NTTs, your bankroll should be going up pretty fast. So yeah, that would be cool. Anyway, if you guys liked this session review, please hit the like button. Please let me know if what you thought about this ace queen hand in the comments, what you would have done in that spot in your shoes. Uh, and hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified when more of these videos come out. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Peace.